Hi, students and family members. This is Mr. Panza and my class. Everybody in the class, say hello. Hello! Okay, and we've been focused on this question right here. Class, floor, floor, hands. Floor, floor, hands. Read that top question. Ready? Go. How do we determine weather? Okay, so we've been predicting weather. And I'd also like you to read this question. Floor, hands. Floor, hands. Ready? Go. Specifically, land features on weather. And we've been studying the last couple of weeks on weather, predicting weather, weather tools, and all sorts of different things. And we're about ready for a quiz. So I'm going to go through the review. You're going to help your student figure out the answers on the review sheet. And the more important thing is actually studying from the review sheet. So I'm going to give you the answers, and you just need to study from it. So let me open up my PowerPoint here. It has been a little slow today, but look at that. It actually came up pretty quick. So we have weather. How do land features affect or impact weather? And how can we predict weather or how can weather be predicted are the two main focus questions. The first one we're going to be talking about is air mass. So an air mass specifically, class, floor hands. Floor hands. Go ahead and read that. Go. A large body of air. So in this case, when you see this question tonight, when it says a large body of air is an blank, you want to put air mass. Because tomorrow on the quiz, there's going to be a question that says, what is that large body of mass? Next one, an anemeter. Anemometer, not an anemeter. The anemometer is going to show us wind speed. And it's an important part of weather. So an anemometer is a weather tool that measures wind speed. And the students have all learned actually a hand and body motion with that. And I know they're not going to be able to see this, but could you all show it and say it? Three, two, one. OK, and that measures the wind speed, which is our picture right here. Let's go to our next one. We're talking about a barometer. Now a barometer, hmm, what does that measure? Students, first show it and say it. Barometer, ready, go. And if you remember what that measures, blow it in your hand. <laughs> Hold it above your head and shake it. Three, two, one. Okay, so I did hear a couple different ones. So this is important to make sure you study this one. Barometers are important to measuring air pressure. Think of it as a pressure in a balloon. When you blow up a balloon, it's got all that pressure in there. Air pressure can help you predict good or bad weather. And this is a picture of a barometer, what it looks like. Next one is a thermometer. This is actually not a question on tonight's because I figure most of us know what a thermometer is. Thermometer is a weather tool used to measure temperature. And this is what it looks like. Next one, wind vane. A wind vane specifically is observed wind vanes. We can know the direction of the wind. Knowing the direction of the wind is an important part of predicting the weather. Now, we did also come up with a hand and body motion. And again, remember, you can't see the students do this, but they're going to show it and say it right now. Remember, it's the direction. So students, show us and say it in 3, 2, 1, A. Wind and thank you. You can put your hand and body motions down. A wind vane measures the direction. And a wind vane that looks like this actually blows or points in the direction that the wind is coming from. So in this case, it looks as though the wind may be coming from the north because the arrow is pointing that way. Next, we're going to talk about fronts. Floor, floor, hands. Floor, floor, hands. Students, please read this to remind yourself what a front is. Go. Okay, so on your question form tonight, it asks you about that and make sure you put the correct answer. This is a bit of an example of a front. So you have a different air mass attached to a different air mass and then those two things combined, that's called a front. Now we want to talk about weather maps. Specifically, I talked about how meteorologists, those are the people that study weather, and normally we see them on television, use to help predict or show different weather patterns. So a weather map is a map that shows weather data or information for a large area. And here's an example of what would probably be a meteorologist or a scientist who studies weather showing different forms on the land map. Who can remember, students, that little box that is typically in a weather map? What is that called? DJ? 
a weather key. So we have different things like color and other things that can also be included in a weather map that help us understand, oh, if it is red, that's typically hot, and if it's blue or green, that's typically cooler temperatures. Let's move on. Now we're going to talk about land breeze. The biggest thing to remember about a land and a sea breeze is whatever the word is in the vocabulary word, that's where the breeze is coming from. Floor, floor, hands. Floor, floor, hands. Okay, read the definition of land breeze in three, two, one. Air that comes from the land and moves to the sea. Okay, so in other words, a land breeze starts in the land and moves to the sea. Do not confuse the two, which means a sea breeze. Sea breeze should be coming from where? If you know the answer, students, blow it in your hand. Hold it above your head and shake it. Three, two, one. Yes. Floor, hands. All right, thank you. So I've got air that comes from the sea is a sea breeze. In other words, if this arrow is coming from the sea, it is a sea breeze. Now, typically, the land will cool down and heat up faster than the sea, which means those breezes, which are always trying to make sure that they're warm, are going to move to the area of warm air masses. So if you have a very nice warm day, then the cool air on the sea is going to move from the sea and move to the land. All right. Now, this is an important question because we're talking about land features here, and specifically mountains. There's a question on tomorrow's quiz that talks about mountains. One side of a mountain gets rain, the other side of a mountain stays dry because mountains are a feature that block air masses, so it must rise above the mountain. The air releases the water vapor. This would answer that question. What is the effect of a rain shadow? What you have is you have all of this air, and the air starts moving up the mountain, and that air gets into the clouds. And the clouds, of course, are full of water vapor. And when that water vapor gets distraught, it starts to rain. But of course, the air is able to move over one side, and there's nothing over here, which means you have rain on the one side of the mountain, and it's completely dry on the other side of the mountain. So because we have a mountain, sometimes that can impact a rain shower, shadow or shower where it's raining on one side, but it's dry on the other. Finally, we get to our cloud second. We have cirrus clouds. Students, show what a cirrus cloud looks like and say it. Three, two, one. Okay. That normally lets serious sun through or serious moonlight through. And typically they are wispy clouds. Here's some more descriptions. High in the sky, they're the highest level clouds. They are very wispy, and they warn of a change of weather. In fact, this morning I was looking up at the sky. It was really warm yesterday. I noticed a lot of cirrus clouds, and I realized a serious weather change was about to happen. And that's what happened. The temperatures dropped. It got a lot cooler today. The next cloud we're talking about are stratus, which are those low ones. Students, show it and say it. Three, two, one. Okay. Our stratus clouds are a low layer of gray clouds, and they typically cover the sky. Typically, they bring a light drizzle or some sort of rain. And our last one. So we talked about cirrus clouds. We talked about stratus clouds. Show and say that last one, those mid-level clouds. Ready? Three, two, one. That's right, cumulus clouds. Those are those puffy ones right in the middle, mid-level clouds that are puffy, and they are common on clear, warm days. Now, at the same time, a lot of cumulus clouds could eventually turn into a thunderstorm. That's pretty much all we need to know when we're talking about how do land features affect weather and how we can predict weather. When we're predicting weather, we're using maps and tools, and when we're talking about land features, you're talking about things like mountains. So I appreciate you stopping by. I hope this video helped answer some questions, and please use it to study. And students, please say goodbye to everyone.